you can choose to not use guns. You can avoid stim packs and healing items. You can get by without killing almost anyone. What you can't do is leave Doc Mitchell's house without a pit boy. But let's say, hypothetically, that you could get rid of the pit boy. Would you be able to beat Fall of New Vegas without a pit boy? First things first, we gotta talk stats. We'll get to the house a bit later. Without a pit boy, we can't equip any weapons or use any items whatsoever. So we'll be relying solely on our fists to do damage, which means strength at 10 is a must. High endurance and intelligence are also essential. Regarding skills, all we really need is unarmed and survival. These will help us do more damage to enemies and take more damage from them. Speech, as usual, will also come in handy. Now how the hell do you even remove the Pip-Boy? Well, you can't. Not through any normal means. However, once again, console commands save the day. All we need is the base ID for the Pip-Boy, and we can permanently remove it. Enter player.unequipitem 00015038 into the console window, hit enter, and voila! The Pip-Boy is gone. I tested this before and I saw it on the ground, but I couldn't find it this time. Oh well. Attempting to use the Pip-Boy will cause the courier to take a nice long look at his forearm. So we don't have a Pip-Boy. What do we do now? Well, there are a few options. Normally I would head straight for Red Rock Canyon by passing through Cazador Alley so that I would be able to fast travel there later on. But without a Pip-Boy, we can't fast travel anywhere and trying to take out enough great cons at level 1 to preemptively complete that portion of Yes Man's questline would be a challenge. Instead, I took the road out of Good Springs, through Deathclaw territory, and to the Strip. Things didn't exactly go as planned. My game froze shortly after killing some Powder Gangers, which set me back a bit. I decided it would be a good idea to stay as far to the right as possible to avoid Deathclaws. Then I took a stroll past Black Mountain for a bit of easy experience, because you get about 9 XP for every location you discover. I got lucky and was able to take down a super mutant for a nice chunk of XP. After killing a gecko, I leveled up, dumped the points into unarmed, and thought I'd exterminate a few powder gangers. They had other ideas. With several broken bones and a sliver of health left, I retreated to a nearby house to sleep. Then. A new idea, Boone. With Boone by my side, enemies would be dead before I even knew they were there. On my way to Novak, I figured I'd pick up some NCR armor, so I could sneak into the strip via Camp McCarran. Suddenly, I remembered that I couldn't equip NCR armor even if I wanted to, because I didn't have a pit boy. Then some fiends killed me. Back from the grave once more, I killed a maintenance robot and decided Novak was too far away. I settled for Veronica. Any companion is better than none, and I'd need 2,000 caps to enter the strip. She would be a perfect mule. After murdering several followers of the apocalypse, I leveled up, sold what I could to the gun runners, and made my way inside the strip. From there, I thought it a good idea to try and take on the chairman without being at max health. I died. Then I tried again, this time leading them on a wild chase throughout the tops all the while being crippled and near death. I took a step onto a table, ready to leap from the balcony onto Benny, killing us both in a beautiful shit show. They put a stop to that real quick. Luckily, I had killed enough people to level up, so I retreated to the Lucky 38, slept in a bed to get a well-rested bonus, and returned to slaughter everyone inside the tops. With Benny finally dead, I could talk to Yes Man, remove Mr. House from the equation, and begin the long, boring task of dealing with the various factions in the game. The Omertas and White Glove Society were relatively simple. Innocent people had their lives ended. Let's leave it at that. Next were the Boomers. Nothing too interesting happened there. Somewhere along the way I lost Veronica, which was unfortunate. Despite her old age, Pearl put up more of a fight than I would have expected. Think of it as tearing through two pieces of paper instead of just a single sheet. My next stop was across the map at Red Rock Canyon. Along the way, I discovered the true meaning of friendship as several fiends beat the shit out of me and cut my leg off as I died. I avoided them after respawning and arrived at Red Rock. 
a hell of a brawl took place inside a great content. In the end, I stood alone, barely. Once again, I had several broken bones. And then I found out all I had to do was talk to Regis, and I'd be able to ignore the great cons. Future me was grateful, but past me is angry with current me for not learning this earlier. The Brotherhood of Steel were all that stood between me and finishing the quest. Veronica was still nowhere to be found. Without a pit boy to chuck the map, I assumed and hoped that she was gone forever. With Veronica gone, I figured my best chance was to punch a Brotherhood Paladin in the face and run away as fast as I can. But uh, they locked the doors. As you can probably imagine, three Paladins in power armor with Gauss rifles can make quick work of a mustachioed man like myself. To make a short story even shorter, I got lucky and hid behind a crate. They took me inside, stripped me naked, and put a collar on me. I smashed a radio, the first time I ever completed that quest that way, and was free to ignore the Brotherhood for the rest of eternity. It was smart to do the Brotherhood last. You see, they strip you of your armor before they put the collar on you, and without a pit boy you can't re-equip that armor. So I'm completely armorless for the rest of the game. On the upside, Veronica was waiting at the Lucky 38's presidential suite, so at least I had my mule back. On my previous adventures, I'd leveled up a few times, and with my unarmed skill at 100, the NCR at the El Dorado substation were easy, like stealing candy from a baby and their parents by utilizing threats of extreme violence towards them all, if they don't do exactly as you say. But I needed my speech skill to be at 100, so Veronica and I killed every last person inside the old Mormon fort. At long last, it was time to head to Hoover Dam. I avoided as many legionaries as I could and installed Yes Man inside the Hoover Dam offices. The NCR soldiers were more than a match for me, so I sprinted into them, knocked them down, and beat them to death while they couldn't fight back. Hitting people who can't fight back. That's the true Mitten Squad way. Then I activated the generators, avoided a lot more enemies, had a little chat with the Legate, had General Oliver thrown off the dam, and beat Fallout New Vegas without a pit boy. So, you're probably asking yourself, is this run worth trying? Yes and no. I found the inability to heal while in combat, or from sources other than a bed or a toilet, to be more annoying than anything else. Even in hardcore, you can still heal, just at a slower rate. No armor or weapons, other than fists, adds an interesting challenge to the game. But I think it a better and more fun challenge would be limiting yourself to two or three weapons and a single set of armor, or just drastically reducing your carry weight. Because I've put so many hours into New Vegas, the inability to use a map wasn't all that inconvenient. I've ran through these quests so many times that I could do it in my sleep. It was the inability to fast travel that really got annoying though. And that is gonna do it for this video about whether or not you can beat Fallout New Vegas without a Pip-Boy. If you enjoyed the video or learned anything, leave a like. Leave a dislike if you didn't enjoy the video or didn't learn anything. Follow me on Twitter at Mitten Squad. My name is Paul of Mitten Squad. Have a wonderful day.